I'd like to consider portions of Psalm 69 around the table of the Lord this morning. <clears throat> In particular, verses 20 and 21. <clears throat> this is one of those Psalms, and there's a few of these where uh, the Holy Spirit gives us insight into the heart of Jesus as he was dying on the cross. These are expressions that Jesus never uttered from his mouth, but these are things that were in his heart, things that we would not otherwise know, so they are very precious, the things that are revealed here. Psalm 69, verses 20 and 21, Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. <clears throat> Now, the reproach here that Jesus suffered was not from God. This was the reproach of, of other men that he suffered. <clears throat> God turned his face from him and cursed him for a moment for our sins. But wicked men reproached Jesus for no valid reason. We could say that he suffered of God righteously, but the suffering he endured of men was unrighteous. <clears throat> they hated him without a cause. <clears throat> They were abusive and full of contempt for him, scorning him while he was bearing all our sins. <clears throat> the reproach that Jesus bore on the cross, <clears throat> in a sense, had nothing, we're talking about the reproach of men, had nothing to do with atonement for sins. That's not what paid for our sins. What Pilate did to Jesus and the scourging and what the Jews did to Jesus, this didn't pay for a single sin. We know this. <clears throat> It did not add to the effectiveness of what Jesus was doing. But from the point of view of making the atonement, the reproach of men upon Jesus was completely unnecessary. <clears throat> so I, there are some things I want to see here <clears throat> in this uh, passage in Psalm 69. Is why, why did Jesus have to endure this reproach of men? Seeing that this is not how our sins were forgiven yet. It is a matter of record, and it's very important. For one thing, we see in this that the very best of Adam's race is under the reign of sin and death, because this is how they behave towards the Lord's Christ. <clears throat> so from this perspective, it's, it was necessary that Jesus bear the reproach of men. The reproach of Christ was the expression of sinful, unbelieving men. <clears throat> The Jews are credited with killing the prince of life, but truly, their treatment of the Lord's Christ is representative of Adam's race in general. <clears throat> no Gentile has any reason to hate the Jews for crucifying Christ, because they would have done the same or worse. <clears throat> Why wasn't Jesus taken and crucified at the hands of godless Gentiles instead? Well, see, God is revealing in his great wisdom so much wisdom is in the crucifixion of Christ. An abundance of wisdom. We continue to mine things out of this. <clears throat> in God's great wisdom, he made this demonstration of what the best of Adam's race would do. The ones who were delivered from the fiery furnace, the one who cro ones who crossed over the Red Sea, the ones who were given the fiery law from Mount Sinai, the ones who were given the land of promise, the ones who God sent all the great deliverers to and the holy prophets, the ones who were given the scriptures, the ones whom Christ came from. This is what they did to the Son of God. They hated him and killed him. <clears throat> now this is what men who are all of Adam's race under the power of Satan, this is what they do. <clears throat> and for the record, again, the Gentiles would have done the same thing or worse. The very best of Adam's and all of Adam's race is at enmity with God unless God himself changes that. <clears throat> so in this psalm and some others, <clears throat> the heart of Jesus is on the cross is revealed here, crying out to God, even though God turns his face from him also. <clears throat> and God is laying the curse for sin upon him, yet he cries out to God. <clears throat> because Jesus knows the difference between God and and between men. He knows that God's wrath is but for a moment, and that he is going to give him the sure mercies of David. Jesus knows how all of this is going to end, as the Father is concerned, 
But with men who are the servants of sin and Satan, there is no mercy and no good ending. <clears throat> he says, I looked for some to take pity and found none. I looked for comforters and I found none. So here's the irony of the situation. When Jesus was on the cross, actually, Adam's race, the men that were there were in the position to show some comfort to him. God wasn't. God was not in the position to comfort him on the cross. But men were, and they didn't. Men could have showed pity, but they didn't. God's cursing of him was essential for the payment of sin. The ones for whom Jesus was dying could have been kind to him. And though we know those that believed in him were. <clears throat> they could have given him some relief in his sorrows and sufferings, but instead they give him vinegar mingled with gall, which is actually poison. Paul wrote to the Corinthians concerning the hidden wisdom of God, which none of the princes of this world knew. That is the leaders, the wisest, the best ones of this world. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen. And another reason why Jesus was so reproached of men was that he must be rejected by men. <clears throat> by divine providence, here in, again here in God's wisdom, they hated him so that he would be crucified outside the city. Outside the gates of the city, this is where he take the murderers, and the thieves and the low lives that re rejects of society, those who suffer ignoble deaths and deservedly so, this is, where, this is where they go outside the city. So God arranged this so Jesus would be taken out there too. Yeah. And that's where Jesus was crucified. It was necessary that he be consumed for sin yeah. as shadowed in the law. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. It's because they bore the sin. You don't eat that, you don't eat that sacrifice. You take it outside and you burn it out away from the people. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his blood, suffered without the gate. The purpose for the blood of Jesus is to take away the sin of the people. Therefore, it was necessary that Jesus suffer outside the camp, out away from where the people are. <clears throat> you know that sin has a tremendous contaminating effect. Yeah. Yeah. If Jesus is to sanctify the people, then as he bears all our sins, he must be taken away from the people, <clears throat> away, from the sin, the, away from the world. So in God's wisdom, it was predetermined that the people would hate him so that they would take him outside the camp. <clears throat> But also, the next verse in Hebrews chapter 13, from, from where I just read, gives us another reason for the reproach that Jesus bore. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, Amen. bearing his reproach. Amen. Now, in God's great wisdom, this is how you participate with Christ. Right. Jesus bore the reproach of men because those who believe on him will have to bear it too. And we could say that the other way around, that we must bear the reproach of men, because Jesus also did. In God's wisdom, the hatred and reproach of those who crucified Jesus is actually for our benefit. Jesus had his cross, and we all have our own crosses to bear. Jesus was delivered to death, and we both die and are dead with him. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. And Paul confessed to the Galatians, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross, of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Jesus intercedes for those on pilgrimage through this world, <clears throat> on the way to the world to come. He knows how to help people who are hated by the world. He knows how to keep you spotless through the world and from the reproach of men. And he can tell every one of us, when I was in the worst of it, when I was in the depths of reproach, being hated of men and cursed of God, I cried out to God, and he heard me. And when it was over, 
My God gathered me again with tender mercies. So he says again in the 69th Psalm, verses 6 and 7, Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let those that seek thee, let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel, because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. So because I bore this, save them too. <clears throat> Hear me, O Lord, the 16th verse. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. And hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. In the last few verses of this psalm, verse 32, The humble shall see this and be glad. And your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that move therein. For God will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah, that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of his, his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. Amen. Let us give thanks for our merciful and faithful high priest. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, <clears throat> as we gather around the table of the Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your great wisdom, Father, in uh, the way that salvation is being worked out through him. We pray that you would grant us uh, clear minds <clears throat> and uh, a good perception to see the things that Jesus accomplished in his death and burial and resurrection. We thank you for his intercession and for the reproach that he bore for our sakes. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.